I am Dr. Heather Moore, owner of Total Performance Physical Therapy. Tonight we are going to go over how to fix a pain in the butt. Uh, I'm not talking about a relative at the holidays. We are talking about a literal pain in the butt. So there are two different ones that often get described in our office. So there's this one and then there's this one. I'm talking about the one that's literally a pain in the butt. The one that's here, the one where people have back pain and can really pinpoint it and that's up here more, that's your SI joint. We'll do another video on that a little bit later. That's not right what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm going to talk about the one that's literally, you could put your finger on it, kills you when you're sitting, burns when you're driving, um, can actually get a little bit better when you're up walking and moving around, but the main trigger for this type of pain is sitting in any type of chair, couch, at work, when you're driving, you're going to get a burning, you're going to get literally a pain in the butt. That is how uh, best to describe it. That's how everybody describes it. And it's something that you can put your finger on right there. This is not a burning that's coming from your back. So if it's, if you have back pain here and it's burning all the way down your leg, maybe stopping there, that's something completely different. This is literally where you can just be like, oh, I have a pain in my butt. Now, it may go to your back, it may go down your leg. So sometimes this type of pain is uh, associated with back pain because it'll start as you're sitting down. And then what you'll do is you'll be sitting there and in order to avoid it, you'll start doing this just to get a little bit of pressure off and you'll start moving around and you'll start to kind of fidget a little bit and that will help relieve some of the pain, some of it sometimes, but it will also cause some back pain. So you do want to be careful as you're uncomfortably moving around and I realize in the car it's almost impossible to do anything about this but in that uh, time you want to be careful of how much you're going to shift around and move around and things like that so what is it and how can you treat it so what you're going to do is this is called piriformis syndrome a lot of times um, if you do have something like this you do want to get it diagnosed by a proper medical professional but most often that pain in the butt is caused by a little muscle called the piriformis it's right in your butt it just gets tight. Now, a lot of times uh, when you have that feeling, that pain in the butt, it's not the only muscle that's tight, that's tight. Uh, and it's not the only issue going on. That's why I said uh, you wanna get this checked out by uh, a medical professional because it's really important to understand the whole scope of what's going on. If you just do the couple of these exercises and you solve the piriformis issue, there may be a sacroiliac or an SI joint issue. There could be some other muscle compensation going on. But sometimes just fixing this muscle and kind of relieving some of the tension does actually help. So what can you do to relieve this muscle and what can you do when you have a pain in the butt? Well, the first thing you do is you want to stand up. You want to move as much as possible. So if you're at work and you know that at 15 minutes of sitting, you're going to get a pain in the butt, you want to stand up at 10. It's going to allow a break in that pain cycle. All right. The worst thing you can do is push through the pain, suck it up. Um, you know, deal with it when you have the ability to stand up. Obviously, if you're driving, that's a totally different situation. We'll talk about uh, what you can do during those times. But if you're at work or you're at home and you're in a situation where you're, you can easily just stand up, you need to do that. And you need to find the threshold where you can sit and be comfortable but not get this pain. If you sit to the point of getting the pain and you sit to the point where you get a pain in the butt, you're going to wind up perpetuating the pain cycle. And when you perpetuate this pain cycle, it's going to cause it to get worse and worse and worse. And what you're going to notice is maybe you could sit for 15 minutes, but now you can only sit for 14 or 13 or eight or one, or the minute you sit down, it starts to hurt. This will slowly get worse and worse and worse if you don't allow this to uh, fix this issue. So the first thing you want to do is you want to find out when you sit down, when the pain comes on. Is it seven minutes? Is it two minutes? Is it 15? Find that threshold and make sure you are up before that threshold hits. By the time the threshold hits, by the time you feel the pain, by the time you start feeling the ache, it's already too late. It's already started the pain cycle. You haven't, you're not going to break the pain cycle at that point in time. But if you're able to catch it before it starts to get irritated, you're going to actually do some good and you're going to allow that muscle a little bit of breather. You're going to allow some good blood to flow into that muscle and release some of the pain, uh, release some of the issues going on there, which is going to decrease the pain. So first thing, get up, all right? And it doesn't have to be a walk to the water cooler. It doesn't have to be a long break. You don't have to go outside. You literally just have to stand up. So if you're on the phone, you know, stand up, shift your weight, walk around your chair. 
It's not a long break, but just allowing your body to stand up and be in a different position. Now, if you do have a pain in the butt, you want to stand for a couple minutes. You don't just want to go and stand and sit back down. Although any type of blood flow into the area, which is what that produces, it produces blood flow into the area when you stand up, is going to be helpful. The longer you can kind of stay in standing, the better and the more that muscle is going to be able to relax. So if you're obviously in the middle of typing something and all you can do is stand up for a little bit, that's not a problem. Just stand up and then sit back down, but allow yourself to get out of that position where that piriformis becomes irritated. What you really want to try and avoid is you want to try and avoid that, you know, shifting in your seat and sitting over like this and crossing one leg like this just to take pressure off of it because that's not okay. So you really want to make the effort to stand up to allow some of that blood to go into the muscle. The second thing you can do is just stretch. And it's a really easy, non-obvious um, non stretch, actually. All you want to do is cross your ankle over your knee. You can do this anytime, anywhere, all right? And you want to sit up nice and straight, and then you want to lean forward, okay? You don't want to slump forward. Actually, just from my back. You don't want to slump forward because you will actually cause your back to have some pain. So you want to sit up nice and straight, and you just want to lean forward. You can feel a stretch here. You can feel a stretch here. You may feel a stretch in your butt. You may not. You may feel a stretch on the outside of the hip. It's okay. It may not exactly target that piriformis. You may not feel it right in that piriformis, but this stretch is targeting a muscle that needs to be stretched. And eventually, you will have to do it. If you go and you put your um, ankle over your knee and you sit like this and it hurts or you feel a stretch just like this, don't move forward. Okay? Go to the point of feeling a stretch. A quick and easy way to see if something is going on or if there is problems in your hip other than the pain is you want to cross the ankle over the knee on this side, cross the ankle over the knee on the other side, and see if they are at the same height. Most of the time if you have pain on one side, one of them will be up much higher. Okay? You also, if you can't get your leg up, all right, pretty easily, there's also an indication. Like it shouldn't be sliding down here and then you really having to work to get it up. Um, you should be able to pretty easily cross the ankle over your knee if your hips are loosened up and, and uh, functioning properly. So the stretch is, again, you just want to cross the ankle over the knee and you want to lean forward a little bit. If you feel a stretch, great, okay? You should. You can go all, as far down as you want. If you feel pain, you want to stop. If you feel any numbness or tingling going down your leg, you want to stop. Okay, so don't allow the stretch to cause more problems than it actually alleviates. So that's the second thing you can do. Number three thing you can do is get a tennis ball, get a spike ball, get a BC ball, and actually put it underneath your butt and rub it around for a little bit, okay? Now, I don't recommend you doing that at work for 20 minutes on end. That's not gonna solve anything. That's probably gonna make you a little bit irritated and a little bit worse. But if you do that for five minutes a couple times a day, it's going to allow you to break up that muscle. It's going to allow you to break up some of that tissue that's causing you some of that pain. So you want to make sure that while you do it a couple times a day, you don't do it for a, a really long concentrated period. But having something under there um, with a spike, like a, a BC ball, is going to help alleviate that pain. Tennis ball will um, at times. But what you don't want to do is, again, you don't want to sit here for, you know, all day because it's going to actually throw off your hips and then you're going to wind up with back pain because now you're sitting in an unsettled position. When you're driving, that's a great way to alleviate some of the pain to get some blood flowing into the muscle is just kind of sit on that ball for five minutes, roll around as much as you can, and then take it out um, because obviously doing a stretch or anything like that is a little bit not conducive for driving. So having that ball in the car with you in order to stick it underneath that one butt cheek is going to help alleviate some of that pain and take care and take care of that, some of that pain in the butt for you. If you have back pain and would like a free back pain toolkit, all you have to do is click on the link, enter your information, and we will be sure to get it right out to you. Thanks and have a good night.